Should we consider a clinical trial? Well, what exactly is a clinical trial? Clinical trials are careful studies conducted by doctors and researchers to either test new cancer treatments or to test treatments we've had in the past, but in a different way. Now, the goals of cancer clinical trials are to help people live longer, to help them live better through better quality of life, and ideally to cure the diseases that they have. Indeed, clinical trials are crucial because that's really the only way that we know that a new treatment or an old treatment used in a different way really is more effective than the treatments that we're currently using or the treatments of the past. There are many patients today that are living longer, they're living better, or they've been cured of their disease because of clinical trials. Taking part in a clinical trial may be the best treatment choice for some blood cancer patients. Some patients may think they should wait after trying standard treatment before they consider a clinical trial. However, trials are not only for patients whose disease did not respond well to the past treatments. There may be trials for patients at any point during the course of their disease. There are trials for newly diagnosed patients, patients whose disease has returned or not responded well to current treatment, as well as trials that are studying therapies to prevent patients' cancers from returning. For a new drug or treatment approach to become a standard treatment, it must be tested in clinical trials. The clinical trials process for cancer drugs is divided into steps called phases. Each phase is designed to answer certain questions about the new drug or treatment approach. In all phases, patient safety is the top priority and researchers closely monitor patients for side effects. There are four phases of clinical trials. In a phase one clinical trial, researchers are trying to determine the maximum tolerated dose that has therapeutic benefits to the patient. Researchers want to learn how the treatment affects the cancer and what the side effects are. In a phase one study, the drug could be a treatment that is being studied in humans for the first time, or the drug could be approved for another cancer, and now it is being tested in other cancers. In a phase two clinical trial, researchers test the effectiveness and further study the side effects of the drug. Phase two clinical trials enroll more patients than a phase one clinical trial. There are times if the phase two clinical trial is effective in the treatment of cancer, the treatment could be submitted for U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, approval. In a phase three clinical trial, researchers are looking at the effectiveness, the side effects, and whether or not the drug is beneficial to the treatment of the patient's cancer. Phase three trials are open to many patients and are offered at more locations than a phase one or two clinical trial. A phase three clinical trial can be to determine whether the treatment being investigated is more effective than the current standard treatment or has a similar effect on the disease, but with fewer side effects. Some trials compare a patient's quality of life on one treatment versus another. Patients may be asked to fill out questionnaires in order to gather this information. A phase four clinical trial gathers long-term data on safety and effectiveness after FDA approval. There are several thousands of patients that are in a phase four clinical trial. Each clinical trial specifies the type of patient eligible to participate. The criteria may include disease type, age of the patient, the stage of the patient's disease, prior treatments the patients may have received, the presence of any other illness or conditions. Patients need to weigh the risk and benefits of clinical trials. To help understand some of the risks and benefits, let's use the example of clinical trials for chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy, or CAR T-cell therapy for short. CAR T-cell therapy uses the patient's own T-cells, a type of white blood cell, to recognize and attack cancer cells. In 2017 and 2018, the FDA approved two types of CAR T-cell immunotherapy, and today, research continues to expand the use of these therapies. Some benefits of clinical trials include 
close care and monitoring from the treatment team. Because clinical trials are closely regulated by the FDA, patients are closely followed by doctors who are experts in their disease. Access to promising treatments that may not be available yet outside of clinical trials. Additionally, some patients like knowing that their participation contributes to the body of knowledge that will help other cancer patients now and in the future. The CAR-T cell therapy clinical trials offered these benefits to many patients and led researchers to a greater understanding of the ways in which the body's own immune system defenses can be used to treat cancer. Things that should be considered are financial costs. There are three types of costs typically associated with a clinical trial. Research study costs. These are the costs related to the clinical trial, such as the cost of the treatment being studied extra doctor's visits, and laboratory and imaging tests done solely for research purposes. Often the trial sponsor will cover such costs. Routine medical care. These costs are related to the patient's cancer treatment, whether or not the patient is in a clinical trial. These costs may include doctor's visits, hospital stays, laboratory and imaging tests, standard care cancer treatments, and treatments to manage cancer symptoms or the side effects of treatment. These costs are billed to the patient's health insurance. And out-of-pocket expenses. These are the additional patient costs. They include travel expenses, food, lodging, etc. In the example of CAR T cell therapy, CAR T cell therapy is not available at all cancer treatment centers. If a patient does not live near a center that offers CAR T cell therapy, the patient will need to consider the costs of traveling to the center for treatment. These costs are not covered by insurance. However, there are often organizations and companies that can help with these costs. It's important for patients to talk with the treatment team to discuss financial concerns. Unknown side effects. Researchers may not be aware of the side effects of some of the newer drugs that are being developed. It is important for patients to talk with their treatment team about these concerns, including the side effects of other treatment options that may be offered. Ongoing clinical trials for CAR T cell therapy are helping researchers further understand and reduce the side effects of the therapy and find ways to improve the management of side effects. There are some common concerns associated with clinical trials. Some of these include receiving a placebo. A placebo is a pill, liquid, or powder that looks like the drug being used in the treatment regimen, but it does not have any effect on the disease. The placebo is inactive. Placebos are not used in cancer clinical trials involving patients who need treatment for their disease unless the placebo is given along with an active drug. In some clinical trials, researchers want to learn if adding a new drug to the standard therapy makes the treatment more effective. In these studies, some patients get the standard treatment and the trial drug, while other patients get the standard treatment and a placebo. Placebos may also be used in clinical trials for patients under watch and wait, meaning the patient's disease does not require treatment at the time, or in trials studying ways to prevent cancer from returning after treatment. It is unethical to give someone a placebo if there is a treatment available that could work. You will always be told if the study uses a placebo. Fear of being a guinea pig. The fear of having no control is a common concern among patients. The idea that a trial patient is being used as a guinea pig is very misleading. It implies that a patient is at the mercy of researchers and may be experimented on without his or her consent. This is not the case. Clinical trials are carefully designed studies that put the health and safety of patients first. Informed consent. Before you agree to participate in a clinical trial, you will be taken through the informed consent process. This process gives you the opportunity to obtain information about the study and ask questions. Only by signing the informed consent do you decide that you want to join the study. Participation in a clinical trial is always voluntary and patients can leave the study at any time. Being randomized. If you're in a randomized study, you will not be able to choose your treatment group. Randomization gives each patient an equal chance of being assigned to any of the groups. Some patients find the idea of not being able to choose their treatment group distressing, especially if they want to be in the group receiving the study treatment. 
It is important to remember that it is not known whether the study treatment is actually better than, the same as, or less effective than the standard treatment, and every patient in a clinical trial can expect to receive medical care, regardless of whether he or she receives the new treatment or the standard treatment. If patients are interested in learning more about clinical trials or finding a clinical trial, they can call the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society at 1-800-955-4572. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society has registered nurses who work with patients and their caregivers one-on-one -on -one to find, enroll, and overcome barriers to clinical trials. LLS also has a clinical trial conversation guide for patients and caregivers to use to discuss clinical trials with their treatment team. Mm -hmm.